what really happened was I was, you know, it's the tail end of my martial arts career, uh, fighting in tournaments, and you know, I would only make few appearances in, in, in some of the tournament, and I was competing in in, in uh, non-combative part of competition, which is called a form competition. And and uh, um, I had my health club in the karate school here in Mason City. And uh, one day I get a phone call from Eric, and he said, and, and he knows I'm a car nut, so he just got, he just bought himself a black vet, and he was driving home from work, from CNN Center to uh, his home in, in, in the outskirts of Atlanta, and um, he's telling me all about his cars. Today I just got this vet, it's great. I said, yeah, I said, I said, uh, Eric, so, uh. So what's going on? And he says, uh, he said, by the way, I'm trying to do some business in Japan. I said, you you still speak fluent Japanese, don't you? I said, yeah. Um, he says, how should I go to Japan with me? You know, next couple weeks. I said, sure. I said, you know, I said, long as long as you buy a ticket, I'll go. So. And even then, even that time, he says to me, because Eric and I wanted to do kickboxing shows, you know, bring the martial arts history of us back to the television. So, so we had a few ideas of how we could do that, and we talked about it. So he says, well, he says, as the meeting gets going, he says, you know, there's an opportunity, and I'll, you'll know when I start talking about karate, then you can kind of cue in and, you know start talking about the martial art thing, you know doing maybe a kickboxing show I said great so he said well, I'll call you next week so he kind of gave me a date that we were gonna leave and uh, uh, I don't know if Eric could remember this but uh, I'm thinking to myself come Monday Tuesday God I thought he was talking about us leaving on Thursday or something so I finally called him and I go at his office actually and and he was he was always nice enough to pick up my call and he says yeah and you know on the other end you know the guy's busy so he's trying to trying to get you off the phone kind of situation so I go so I say hey how you doing and trying to make small talk and I can tell he was busy and uh, he says to me uh, he says well yeah I mean I'll talk to you you know later on and I said well but before you go I said Eric are we still going to Japan like Thursday? And he said, this was his classic Eric Bischoff. He goes, oh, you're the guy I was talking to. I'll call you right back. And, and certainly he called me back and he says, yeah, can you be here like Thursday? Uh, you know, I got your ticket out of Atlanta and we can go. And actually, that's how I end up going to Japan now. The best part of this story is that Sonny Ono have no idea about what's about to take place in Japan. So I'm getting a free trip to Japan, go eat some good food. Hopefully we can talk about our project of martial art, kickboxing. So not knowing anything that have taken place between WCW and New Japan. So uh, we have a meeting with New Japan. And Eric says, look, don't worry about it. Don't say anything. You know, if we get opportunity, we'll talk about the kickboxing. Great. So we go to uh, TV Asahi uh, television studio. And they had a conference room. And this is the first time I meet um, um, uh, Ricky Choshu, who, you know, scariest looking big Japanese guy and then you got Masa Saito who's 64 Olympian and 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 most of you know a lot of the a lot of the American wrestling fan knows who Masa Saito is who just happened to pass away um, last week um, who, who was very kind to me um, with all the thing about wrestling no, I don't know yeah no I didn't know him and yeah. you know he he's got one lazy eyes you know so when he's looking at you, you don't know if he's looking at you or, and you don't know what your eyeball to follow. But, but, um. And he was also involved in that, 
it was, he wasn't there for when Ken Patira threw the rock through the window, but yeah, but he got arrested. To the, he was involved with the scuffle with the police after right, he got right, gone. yeah, and then he ended up doing time in Wisconsin, you know. So but, he's a tough guy. Oh, I mean, legit tough, scary guy. Then you got uh, uh, Mr. Sagaguchi, who was part of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Who was uh, he's about six. He's a big Japanese guy. He's probably six, three. You know. Uh, heavyweight judo champion, and then you know, then then we had a uh, Mr. Baisho who was their uh, uh, financing guy. But these are scary-looking Japanese guys, and and I don't know if we we're on the same level when we were talking. But what I kind of what I remember, at least in my mind, that they were up in a little bit up on a platform, and they were up here, and here's Eric and I. And uh, Tiger Hattori, Mr. Hattori, their famous referee for New Japan Pro Wrestling, who still works with this company even to this day, who speaks fluent English because he, he's, he's a Japanese guy like me, but lives in New York. So Hattori, as we go into the meeting, and mind you, I don't know anything about what took place between two companies. So first time I'm hearing this is the word that's coming out of Eric Bischoff's mouth. So Mr. Hattori says to me, he goes, you translate. And I wasn't expecting to do that. You know, I was, you know, I was just supposed to stay quiet. So I get put on a spot. So I, okay, you know, and, 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 and it's interesting thing enough, my Japanese is my 11 year old Japanese because that's when I left Japan. So, you know, my, because in Japan, as, as in a lot of country, certainly in an Asian country, people talk different with how they address people and I, I address yourself against against uh, somebody who's older or senior so it's a little bit different so um, so with that I I'm translating what Eric Bischoff is saying to these Japanese scary guys for the first time I'm hearing and translating so it turns out that uh, prior management of uh, uh, WCW has taken upward of half a million dollars out of New Japan an agreement to do a talent exchange to send WCW talent to New Japan for their tours or their shows. And that's Bill Watts' regime, right? I believe so, you know. Um, um, and, and unfortunately, the reason why these guys look like they wanted to kill us and stick us in Sumida River because none of these guys are really talking, right? I mean, they're just looking at us like, why you guys are here, kind of look. And turns out that, that, that as I'm listening to Eric and as I'm translating, that, that he, Eric is apologizing for the uh, debacle of not sending any talent. And basically just took all their money and not sent the talent. <laughs> and I'm hearing this and going like, oh, now I'm understanding why these guys look like they want to kill us. Because I'm representing a company that took their money. So Eric didn't give you any worry. No, none. He gave me no heads up whatsoever. <laughs> I'm sweating bullets. And uh, uh, basically, um, Eric was there to rekindle their relationship, or this relationship. And and Eric's a pretty smart guy, and he says, "Listen, let me try to make that up for you. Um, you know, um, without you guys paying us, because you already paid us." So let me, under my regime, I'm in charge. Let me try to make up for the money that you pay for with the service that we promised you. So all of a sudden, Masa Saito says uh, to me in Japanese, who is going to be our contact person? Because the problem always has been is I will contact the office, and by the time I got to an answer, that we were requesting the talent, you know, we couldn't make the logistic work. You know, we couldn't, we didn't have enough lead time to advertise and a lot of other stuff. So there was communication was really issue. So without a skip and a beat, you know, Eric says, oh, that'll be sunny. And I'm looking at him like, when, when did I start working for you? So in, the, in essence, at that moment, that's how I got into wrestling business. 
So what was your contract like for, for that job? Because I guess you didn't quit your businesses here. No, and I said, you know, I mean, afterward, I mean, Eric kind of whispered to me and he says, you know, he says, don't worry. He says, look, all you have to do is answer the phone. Tell me, you know, tell me what they want and, and we'll make it happen. So, so you received like a yearly Yeah, contract. yeah, you know, you know, yeah, I, I think I, I think it was something like $18,000 a year to answer telephone and, commu you know, make sure this communication channel was open and Eric was always kind enough that you know and they knew that Eric and I was friends so he would always be I'd be able to get in touch with the man in charge you know and that was a big issue back then so um, and that that's that's how it ha happened was with uh, also there was a Brad Regans who worked for New Japan uh, was dear you know all-time high school friend of Eric Bischoff and he's the kind of try to set this thing kind of rekindle this relationship so um, uh, with Brad and I working together, um, you know, we got things done, and and that's that's how the New Japan uh, WCW relationship um, blossomed, you know, to say the least. Did you deal with any of the WCW guys that were being sent over there directly? Were you the one talking? Yeah, cause some of the tours that they would go on, you know, I got to go on a tour with them, um, um, you know, Randy Savage, you know, Roll Warrior Hawk. You know, um, yeah, there, there, there was a few issues with those guys and, you know, Ric Flair and, you know, because they, they would do a big show and our big guys would go on their big shows, you know, Tokyo Dome shows and, and Osaka Dome shows and Fukuoka Dome shows. What, what people in the United States probably don't understand is that when Japan has big shows like, you know, the, the New Year, January 4th, Tokyo Dome show, I mean, you're talking about, you know, 30, 40,000 people in the arena. And that's, in essence, their big pay-per-view, kind of like, you know, the, the big show that we have here. And and uh, and, 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 and it, it's pretty crazy when you go to see it and when you see a, um, a wrestling show with that many people. 